Hi friends, welcome back to The Couch Crochet, episode 121, Flowers for My Curtains. I am so excited to do this. Hi friends, welcome back to The Couch Crochet. Tonight I'm up here going over flowers for my curtains. Last night, um, no not last night, the night before, I posted an episode, which was my last episode, um, that I needed help making flowers for my curtains. I realized that my neighbors out back can see right into my downstairs windows. So what I did was just Googled crocheted curtains and I found something that inspired me to make the curtains. And I will insert a picture here of what the idea is um, and what I'm doing, kind of. Um, I, you know, I always alter everything. I can't ever do anything as I should. So I'm asking my friends, my subscribers, um, you guys, to send me random flowers or butterfly or a leaf or a mushroom or a bird, um, applique or a cute bug or um, I can't think of anything else along those lines. Something nature -y, I'm thinking and think like um, tiny fairy house kind of theme going on um and or just the flowers that she did it with which I have started on and I love the pattern I love how they're turning out I understand how she wants to put them together um and I understand that concept but you know I always think outside the box so I'm throwing in a couple of extra little things here and there that I'm gonna do to add to it and I did do two extra things um was it last night I was up here? No, the night before. Yeah, I was up here, did the last video, and then I worked on them. I didn't do anything last night. I set, spent the night at home with my kitties and did some things around the house. So here I am um, up here tonight shooting this video. And then again, I'm going to go work on a couple of other ideas that I'm going to add to um, this curtain. So first I'm going to share with you where I got the idea and who inspired it. Um, the website is called, and I'll leave the link down below, Once Upon a Pink Moon. I love that website name. She's very, very creative. And I do believe that she may be from UK. Don't quote me on that, but I think so. Um, so I will leave the link down here below of where I got the original idea. It also has the pattern listed there um, for the full flower and the half flower. So guys, when I was scrolling down, um, you know, reading through it and everything, it actually has a um, link for a tutorial um, that this wonderful, wonderful, oh, why wasn't it available right now? Um, that somebody did, oh, here it goes, that somebody did with, um, with, um, Once Upon a Pink Moon's permission. Hey, everybody. Oh, let me mute it here. So I followed the, um, written pattern, you know, cause I didn't realize that there was this tutorial, but I'll also link her down below and I'll do an app for her. It is called, um, Stitch and Stacy, uh, all one word, Stitch in and then Stacy, S-T-A-C-Y. Again, I'll leave a link down below. She has video one and video two. I did not see yet whether there was a video for the half. And I did watch um, some of number two. I watched all of number one and some of number two. So I'm not sure if she adds on the half or if there is a half. If I find the half um, flower that is inspired by this idea. I will also link that down below. And that is um, that. So now I just wanna share with you guys a little bit that I did get done. <coughs> First, I'll share with you the pattern that is recommended to do this curtain. I made three of them. Two of them I made out of cotton, some of the similar colors. So first I'll just go over the, the um, oh, that one I didn't use. This one. This one is Sugars and Cream. The color is light blue. It's 2.5 ounces, 7.9 grams. 
Number four, it is made in the good old USA. Yay. Uh, recommended hook size is a five millimeter. Recommended needle size is a 4.5. This one I used in two of the um, flowers that I did. And then the next one that I used two of, I only have a little tiny bit left. It is the same exact yarn, but this one was purple. And I no longer had the label. I didn't have the label in the first place. Um, and I don't know what the exact color was. Um, but I do know that it was amongst the peaches and cream scraps. Then the other color that I did was from Premier's Just Cotton. It is called Pewter. That is like the gray that I used. Um, what other color? Green. Green I used was Premier's Just Cotton. Um, and here it's 104 yards, 96 meters, 21 or 2.1 ounces, 6 grams. This is 85% cotton, 15% polyester. As were this, I believe, is 100% cotton. Yes. Uh, this one's a mix. Oh, and here's the pewter. Sorry. And I'll show you the purple in the actual flower because I don't have any more left. It was like this much and I threw it out. I'm sorry. I didn't save it. <laughs> um, this color is sage. Uh, medium weight number four. Recommended needle size of 5.5 millimeter I9. Recommended. Nope, that was hook. I'm sorry. That was hook. Needle size is a 5 millimeter US 8. And here's the sage color. So I think that goes over all the four colors that I used. Yes. So here is the first one. And this one I did not switch up um, every row. And I still have my ends to tuck in back there. But here's how the first one turned out. Loving it. And then here's the second one. And the second one I took out, I used all four colors. Um, that one I just used three. This one I used, whoops, wrong way. Wait, is that the wrong way? Yeah, that was the wrong way, was it? Yes. <laughs> um, so here's the second one. And again, this is like cotton, all cotton, and then cotton polyester with just cotton by Premier. And then uh, those are the two that I made out of those. Then the third one that I used, I switched up to acrylic. I wanted to use my scraps. The center is this bright orange. And I know that this is Red Heart Super Saver. No, it is not. I'm lying. This is um, this. Is this. Uh, handmade Modern Worsted Yarn. Uh, 219 yards, 200 meters, 3.5 ounces, 100 grams, 100% acrylic, uh, four medium, recommended needle size is a five, recommended hook size is also a five or an H8. Um, this color I do believe was just labeled orange. And then the next one I used is the same yarn, but that color is, Marine. And then the other color, I don't know what this white is. It's a scrap. I could not tell you um, where it came from. I don't know. It's, oh, and the white that I used, oh, I didn't use that one yet. Yeah, so that's scrap. I couldn't tell you where it came from. And then the last color was the purple of this one. And this is what I have. And again, this was kind of a scrap, but it just so happens that I do have a ton of these. So I'm able to show you in skein form. And that color is called amethyst. And here's what that label looks like. And through all of this, I use a size 
H hook. I have no idea what size she recommends. I didn't even look. I don't even know if it says. But I used an H. So here's what the last one looks like. And this one's all acrylic. Now, I didn't do any of the half ones yet. Um, I got too excited on the holes. Um, I think I'm going to do a whole bunch of whole flowers and then move on and work on just the half flowers. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be some repeat colors throughout because I'm realizing I don't have a lot of um, scrap yarn that's solid colors. And my wall back there of solid colors is kind of meh. Yeah. So there might be some variegateds in here somewhere, some fuzzy stuff. I don't know. I'm going to try to use up as much scrap as I can. So you might see repeating colors going throughout. And I do apologize for that, but it is what it is. Okay. And then when I was done those, I was like, oh, okay. You know, I made these three. I remembered me mentioning in the video that I had a book up here. And here's the book that I was referring to. It's called 200 Fun Things to Crochet. Decorative flowers, leaves, bugs, butterflies, and more. I found two flowers in here that I already have done that I was super excited about. Now, these ones are smaller, and I do understand that, and that's okay. Um, the first one that I did... This was also sugars and cream. I've already gone over the specs of it. So the um, color is um, Delft Blue. D-E-L-F-T, Delft Blue. And then the yellow that I used, and I already went over these specs is, oh no, I did not. Well, yes, I did. I went over the specs for the Premier Yarn. But this color <laughs> is called <laughs> Yellow. And the flower, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, and you know, it is what it is. Meconopsis. M-E-C-O-N-O-P-S-I-S. -I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> and once I sew this on, that gap will not be there anymore. But here um, is this little flower that I'm going to add to it somewheres. I don't know why that one looks so big. I must have been comfortable with that stitch. But there's that one. And I cap them in the book and I put stuff on them to flatten them out. <laughs> I might have to do that with all of them. I might just book flatten them. <laughs> okay, so I went over that one. And then there's one more that I did out of this book. And this is called the Ox Eye Daisy. And the white that I used came in a mystery box from Macari that was just cotton yarn. So I don't know who the maker of this is, but this is how it looked when it came to me. And the yellow I already went over with you guys was the just cotton. So here, uh oh, it looks like I pressed down a petal in the wrong direction. Oh no, I'm going to have to repress it. That's all right. I'll give them a little wetness and then I'll press them again. Um, minus this leaf that went the wrong way. <laughs> There's my little daisy. Um, it's called Ox Eye Daisy. Now I think also with the variegated and a yellow center, I'm going to make a few more of these daisies. And I think with some more of the solids, I might make a few more of these. You know, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what I feel like making that day. I don't expect this to be done, you know, overnight, obviously. Um, I have had uh, a few subscribers already reach out to me and ask me for my email address, which just tickled me pink. Like, I don't know. I just... I'm just shocked every day at this community and how much we stick together and bond together and pick each other up and help each other out and fix each other and, you know, egg each other on and support each other. It just, it's just amazing guys. I just love it. Absolutely love it. I am very happy with the, the, uh, hobby that I chose. <laughs> well, actually maybe this hobby chose me. 
I think this hobby chose me. I don't think I chose this hobby. I think it definitely chose me. So I'm going to end today's reading with my goodness. I'm going to end today's video with a reading from Melody B. Tai. Uh, Journey to the Heart, Daily Meditations on the Path of Freeing Your Soul. And we are on February 25th. Learn to heal yourself. I feel a heaviness in my lungs, almost a pain. The next day, I found myself crying, discharging old grief and sadness. On another occasion, I feel sharp pangs in my stomach. Within days, denied rage been begins to surface and the pain subsides. My head aches, pounds, throbs. Hours later, I feel the fear I've been running from. From, I feel the energy in my body shifting, moving, taking new shape. Over the next months, I'm led into a new cycle, a new season in my life. <clears throat> Some of the pains and illnesses we suffer from are indications of acute physical problems. These signs that our body has broken down and needs some medical attention. But maybe the aches and pains we're experiencing are symptoms of a deeper process, a process of healing and cleansing our heart and soul. As we go through our daily expectations, circumstances will trigger this healing. Someone says something that makes us feel anger or afraid, which triggers a feeling similar to one we have repressed years ago. Or a conversation causes us to remember something that hurt us long ago. And our body begins to release the pain of that old emotion. Sometimes our aches and pains are signals that some emotion is ready to, sur to surface. We need to acknowledge that feeling. Feel the energy. Let it pass through us. Then watch for the lesson to appear and the pain to despise. If we are committed to a path of spiritual growth, our bodies will soon begin to use everything that happens as a vehicle for healing. Trust yourself and listen and know, and you'll know what you need to do. You'll find helpers and healers that will support you as you continue to discover and trust your soul. Remember to trust the simple everyday wisdom of your body. It's a barometer for your soul. So guys, that's all I have for today's video. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today at headquarters. Be safe and stay groovy. Bye.